Hey guys, it's Max Convexity. Let's have a little end of the day high yield report. See what's going on. All right, let's see what's on the agenda for this afternoon. ETF heat map, defiance trades, why triple Q's first day is in the books. I'm excited about that. That's an inverse NASDAQ fund. It's not a covered call fund. It's a covered put fund because it's inverse. In any event, uh, it should do well when the market is declining. Or it should do better than, than the bullish NASDAQ funds do when the market's declining. We're also going to look at the Tesla crash delta neutral trade. And we'll also look at the billion dollar baby trade. All right, so... Let's start over here with defiance. Let's just go straight to the charts. Because we have profit boxes today. Let's just see how we finished in relation to the profit boxes. I think it was all, all of a profit. These are daily charts. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. Look at the size of the gap between yesterday's close and today's bar. And it didn't fill it. And there's an, another unfilled one below. So that's bullish. The fact that this one didn't get filled the same day or the next day is bullish. Now we have two gaps that didn't get filled the same day or the next day. So that's double bullish. It's the reverse of what happened over here. We had an unfilled gap on the downside, which was bearish. It didn't get filled. And then we had a second one. It indicated more bad times ahead. And then we had a third one. What did it indicate? More bad times ahead. Then we had a fourth gap, and then finally it was done going down. But following the gap is an effective way to uh, – the market's telling you when it's gapping. It's telling you which way it's trying to go. Between this day and this day, there's an open gap that never was filled, and the market took off after that. Then there's another one right here. The rule is go with the gap. Go in the direction of the gap unless it's filled pretty soon, like on the same day. All right, so that's so NASDAQ, uh, that's triple QI, so that's the total profit for those guys. I'll get it down to the 30-minute chart. We can see a little better. It was above the profit box all day long. Full profit. We looked at the dividend estimates and everything this morning. We'll do that again tomorrow morning. Let's just look at this. This is a full profit. IWMY trades Russell options. That's a full profit as well. Now let's look at USO. These options don't expire until tomorrow. Let's see. Uh, all right. So these options don't expire till tomorrow. Max profits at 78. Minimum profits at 76, 89, it looks like. Okay. So now let's look at. Let's see what else we have to look at. Let's look. Let's look down here at the buffer report. All right. So let's see what's standing out today. Well, look at all Y triple Q. First days in the books. Okay. So this is an inverse fund. So I think this should be a pretty good hedge for triple for Q triple Y or triple Q Y. Any, or it should, be, it should be a decent hedge for any of these. Triple QI was up 71 basis points. So if you would have done the pair, you would have been down whatever, 29 plus 16 basis points. What is that, 37 or 47? Uh, all right. So, but this, this inverse fund could also hedge triple QT effectively, I believe. And it could also hedge QDTE effectively. It could hedge a lot of stuff effectively. It could also hedge. It could also be a good hedge for YMAX, really, when it comes down to it, or YMAG. There's a jillion possibilities. I'm obsessed with these inverse funds. I'm obsessed with hedging and hedging top strategies. All right, so let's see what else happened here. Everything else is pretty much in line. ULTY had a nice bounce back today. QILD had a good-looking day. Kind of the weakest day was had by ZIVB, but that's not a real big deal because – that thing's been on fire lately. So JEPY was up 64 basis points, not a bad day. All right. So 
Let's look at the Tesla crash delta neutral trade. Then I am going to let you guys go. I got some other stuff to do. It looks like the spreadsheet's screwing up. Let me hit refresh and hopefully that fixes it. The bottom line on this trade is the bullish component of it, which would be, or the bearish component of it, which would be crash, was of course down today because the market's bullish. Tesla was up today, right? Yes. So the bearish component is down 3.02%. But remember, it's a pairs trade. You would also have the equal amount of Tesla, which was actually up 1.33%. Still, but for the pair, you would be down 1.62%. Since inception, and this fund's been around since the 1st of May, around the 1st, yeah, around the 2nd of May, this pairs trade has been available. And since then, it's down about 8%. Now, it's yielded 20%. But if you include the NAV decay, the NAV depletion, because the, the dividends paid out of the NAV, of course, it comes to about 8%. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you for being here. And I will be back in the morning. And we'll see what we're doing right about probably, probably back about 9 o'clock. We'll see how we open up. All right, guys, I appreciate you. You have a wonderful day.